Welcome to Tech with Mr. Westland. I'm Mr. Westland and today I'm going to introduce you to a program called 3D SketchUp which is used for 3D modeling. We're going to use some of its basic features to create this three-dimensional true shape and true size toy locomotive. So let's go ahead and open up SketchUp and to do that just depending upon what your kind of operating system you're using, you're going to go ahead and get this introductory dialog box. And the one thing that you must do is choose a template. And that's this button right here. Because we need to tell the program and what type of line styles and shading, etc. we want to use. We're just going to go with the first one, simple template in feet and inches, and click on start using SketchUp. When the program opens, you'll see that you've got quite a few different trays and toolbars. You've even got a guy in the, just standing there in the middle with his hands in his pockets. Let's go ahead and just take a quick little tour here. Across the top, we have our Getting Started toolbar. And this has various commands like Erase, the Line tool, different kinds of arcs, different types of 2D objects. Um, or is called shapes and you'll notice there is a little pull down arrow and when you click on that you can choose some of the different shapes that you can draw anyways we'll go through most of these and maybe some that are not even there over on the right side we have several different trays and you can open and close those by just clicking on the shaded area the instructor toolbar is the one that you're going to want to have open because that is going to give you various hints and tell you different functions and it changes whenever you select a different tool. It gives you different hints and different information. Down in the very lower right corner is a very small box. It's called the measurement box and that will tell you how long or what the different dimensions are of the geometry that you're drawing. And then in the middle, we've got this guy, which we're just going to go ahead and grab the arrow or the select tool. We're just going to delete him for now. I just went ahead and hit the delete key. You can also use the eraser. We have a green axis. We have a red axis, and they're at 90 degrees to each other, perpendicular. And then we have blue axis, which goes in the vertical direction. So think of it as X, Y, and Z axis if you've had some algebra and or geometry, or just think of them as red, green, and blue. To begin my locomotive, I'm going to go ahead and make the rectangular base for it, the frame, if you will. And I'm going to begin with the line tool. So I'll click on the pencil here, and I am going to start at the origin. You can start anywhere you want, but I think you'll find in the long run it's always easiest to start at the origin where the red, green, and blue axes meet. So I click, and now I have to decide after starting my line what direction do I want to go and how long do I want to make it. Now down in the measurements box, you'll notice that as I pull this line, make it longer and shorter, it gives me different measurements. So if I pause right there, I'll have a line that's about 29 feet long. But I only want about 4 inches. So I'm just going to come down and first of all determine my direction. I'm going to go parallel or rather on the green axis. And I'm just going to mouse out a ways and I'm not going to click anything. I'm just going to type in a 4. And since we're working with the feet and inches template, SketchUp assumes that anytime you enter a numerical value in the measurements box that it is in inches. If you want to use the foot symbol you can so if I add a foot symbol after the 4 it'll make it 48 inches long. So I'm just going to hit enter and that makes my line which looks really small but now I'm going to use the scroll wheel and I'm going to keep my cursor close to where I'm at or close to where I want to see so that I can zoom in on it. So now SketchUp is rubber banding, if you will. It's, it's, it's anchored at that endpoint and wants to know where the next endpoint is. Again, we need direction and we need distance. So if you pause or just mouse until you get on the red axis, what it's really saying is parallel to the red axis, 
And if you pull out a ways and type in eight, I've now got an eight inch line. Then I will come down to along the red axis. Let's see here. I want to be parallel to the, there we go, parallel to the green axis. And I'm just going to again type in four. And finally, I'm going to rubber band down here to the end point on the origin and click. And anytime you close the surface or make it watertight so there are no gaps in the edges, SketchUp fills up the interior area and you now have what is called a face. So I can select a face or I can select just an edge and have both. If I select that edge and delete it, well the interior disappears because the geometry is no longer watertight. So we'll just undo that. And next we'll give our surface or face some thickness and to do that we'll use the push-pull tool and we'll click on the face. Notice how the little dots appear to let you know that that's the geometry that's actively selected. Click on it and you can pull up or you can push down. It's totally up to you. We can kind of get a sense of where we want to be, but what I want it to be is about a half inch. So I have two choices. I can put in 0.5 and hit enter and it's exactly half an inch or I can pull up again just to give it the direction and I can type in 1 slash 2 and hit enter and it does the same thing. So whether you want to work with decimals or fractional units or both, you can actually put in whatever you want in terms of dimensions. Before we construct the boiler for our locomotive, I want to just do one little quick housekeeping thing here. I'm going to come up to view and choose toolbars. When I click on that, I get the option to go ahead and select all kinds of different toolbars. But for now, let's just go ahead and select the view toolbar. And when I do that, these little houses appear. So I can now choose an isometric view. I could choose the top view. I could choose a front view, side view, etc. Now I can tell that because of the way that we started the base that what I think of as the front or the narrow end is actually, in this case, a side view. For, now watch what happens. I'm going to go ahead and click on front and see it gives me the long side. It's not a big deal. You, you know, you will learn in time how to rotate that geometry and quickly fix it. So for now, let's just go ahead and move on to drawing the boiler for our locomotive. And to do that, let's go to the top view. And this time, rather than using the pencil tool, I'm just going to use the rectangle tool. Start up about here and draw a rectangle like so. And just kind of eyeball it. SketchUp will sort of snap two areas to keep everything pretty symmetrical. And we'll go back to our ISO view now. And we've not only drawn an additional rectangle, but if we use the select tool, you'll notice that SketchUp split these faces into two unique faces. And that's to our advantage. So now we're going to use the push-pull tool and we're going to pull up about, well, let's just say three-eighths of an inch. And so we have the base of our boiler. And now we're going to come around to this side and to actually make the boiler, we're going to take and use the circle tool you could use an arc tool as well, but I think at this point circle tool works pretty well for you folks. And as we move in here, we're on the edge, but we don't want the edge, we want the midpoint. And as you get close to the midpoint, a snap will come up to tell you that you're there. And we'll just go ahead and pull this out and SketchUp is now asking us to find where we want it to end. So we'll just zoom out and I'll just come out to this edge and it makes a big circle and I've got more geometry than I want so I'm just going to come in now and click on the erase tool uh, delete that part and that arc and I guess that part of the circle 
or an arc. Okay, and now to finish the boiler, let's do a zoom extents to get all the way back out. We'll use the push pull tool and we'll come across here and we want to stop at this end point or somewhere even with this face. Either way, but we'll go ahead and make it the exact same length as our rectangular box down below. And there's the boiler. So next we'll go ahead and make the cab. There's a couple of quick things that I want to do before we go ahead and draw the cab. One is to change our camera view from perspective to parallel projection. And the reason that I do that is that I think it just makes it a little bit easier for you to see what's going on in terms of following along with a flat 2D monitor. So we'll change it and obviously it changes the way it looks, but if we go to our top view, you can see that everything is rectangles, even though we have some arcs or cylindrical faces within our model. The other thing that I want to go ahead and point out is that SketchUp does not really draw 3D solid objects. So if I come in, for example, and delete this front face by hitting, selecting it and hitting the delete key, you'll see that we actually have a model that's made up of infinitely thin surfaces. They're just 2D in a 3D world. So sometimes we need to go ahead and create thickness to some of our surfaces where it matters. And the cab is going to be a place where that actually matters. So we're going to go to our top view and we're going to do some layout geometry. By that, I mean we're going to use a new tool called the tape measure tool to lay out some lines. So I'm going to go ahead and come over after selecting the tape measure tool, and I'm going to grab that edge and hold down the left mouse button and pull across to this endpoint right there. And I want to make sure that it's on the bottom, but it's not, is it? So let's do that one more time. Instead of from the top view, from an isometric view, I'm going to pull it over till right there. And that's what I want to get rid of that errant guideline. Uh, let's see. Now I also want to take and draw another line that goes from this edge in just a little bit. And then one that comes from here. If I come to this edge right here, that's about an eighth of an inch. So let's make it one sixteenth of an inch. One slash sixteen. There we go. And let's go down to this same area here and we'll just pull it some ridiculous amount, then type in 1 slash 16 and it'll snap back to where we want it. So we now have what we can use to draw our cab. And so to do that, I'm going to use my pencil tool to make a 3D shape. Get restarted. And now to give it some thickness, I am going to maybe start about, well, we'll go ahead and just start at this end point. Oh, I did it again. There we go. There down to about there. And then to about there. And then we'll close it up about there. And SketchUp did a nice job of inferring or guessing where I want to snap those particular points. So now let's give it some thickness. Oh, we need a front, don't we? So there we go. We're going to come down here, parallel to the green axis. So we now have a box within a box, so to speak. And we'll use the push-pull tool. And if we mouse in, we can put that little red arrow on that surface. We're going to hold down the shift key since it didn't grab the front. Well, it's, it's not going to do that. So let's just go ahead and come up what seems like a reasonable amount. We can fix that at any particular time. I'm going to come around to this side and grab that front. And let's see, it's going to come up to there. 
and then I'll grab it again and mouse over this top edge so they're now the same height. So I now have my cab. It's just basically the four different walls. So let's go ahead and make an opening. To make my opening, I'm going to go ahead and go to somewhat of a front view and draw a rectangle across the front, something that looks about right. And let's go ahead and just sort of take a look at our tile model here before we get too involved. Do a zoom extents. I like the proportions of that. If I want to make it just a little bit smaller, I can go ahead and come in and erase this little segment and erase that front segment. Come down here, do the same thing. And what that gives me now is the face on the top that if I wanted to, I could use the push pull tool to change the height of my cap. But I like where it is, so I'm just going to hit escape. Now, to create an opening here, if I was just to go ahead and do like I did a little bit earlier and select that face and delete it, it doesn't punch through. In other words, it just goes ahead and cuts a cuts a hole in that face. And that's not what I want to do. What I want to do is use the push-pull tool and instead of pulling out, I'm going to push back. But how far? Because I don't know how thick those walls really are. Well, SketchUp will help me with that. You'll notice that as I go back, see how it gets that kind of um, different shaded inference? And I can go ahead and click on that and it cuts a hole for me. Now, if it doesn't do it for you, and sometimes it doesn't, what you can do is you can go ahead and click on it, and you can start to click on it, start to pull back, come around to the other side, and just mouse over on the face, and it will do the same thing. Okay? So there's that. Now let's go ahead and put in some windows on the side, and to do that, I am going to go ahead and just put in a little bit of cheater geometry. We'll do a zoom extents here. Let's see, that's the back. So we're just going to go ahead and go to one of the sides here. And I'm just going to draw a line. I'm going to mouse around to about the midpoint. There it is. Left click. Come down. Type in 7 slash 8. Hit enter and there we go. And then I'm going to use the circle tool to make a circle here for my opening of my window. I make it about that size with 5 eighths. So we'll say 5 slash 8. Hit enter. And then we're going to go around to the other side and do the same thing. We're going to draw a line from the midpoint of this along this edge. We're going to come down 7 eighths. So I type in 7 slash 8. Hit enter. Then I'm going to use the circle tool and how big did I make that circle? I'm not sure I remember. I think I made it 7 eighths. I'll fix it in a second if I didn't, okay? Okay, I paused there for a second and check the dimensions with my tape measure. So I'm going to go ahead and do an undo. And now I'm going to use the circle tool instead of 7 eighths, draw what it was, 5 eighths. And there we go. Now I don't need this cheater geometry, so let's just go ahead and delete that. Come around the other side and do the same. And then let's cut our holes by using the push-pull tool. So I'm going to push in and see, up oh, there it is. So I've got that one cut. And now over on this side, do the same thing. There we go. And I've now got the holes cut for my locomotive. And you can go ahead and put a door on the back if you want. But next thing that we want to do is go ahead and put the roof on our locomotive and, and then continue from there. There are many, many methods and tools that you can use within SketchUp to build the roof for the cab. As a matter of fact, the entire locomotive. And if you find something that's just a little bit different but gets you to the same place, that's just great. I'm going to come in here and 
go ahead and a line coming up. Let's see, let's come up about, we'll say three eight. So three slash eight. And then I will sort of come down here and I want it to be over this point here. So I'm going to pause on that endpoint. And then as I pull up, see that dashed line? And as I come up and it becomes parallel, it will tell me, there we go, parallel with the green axis. So click there and click down there and we have the start of the roof of our cab. Now the exact dimensions aren't super important, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the roof just a little bit and then come around this side and pull back some. And let's see, let's pull this out. Let's see, it's kind of hard to tell, so I'm going to have to orbit around. Let's see, go to view here, that helps us see what we got. There we go, that's a little bit better. So I'm going to come out here to, so that I'm even with that face again. And then I'm going to pull out, say, quarter inch. And then I'll come over to this side and just double click, and it will come out a quarter inch again. Because SketchUp remembers. Now we got a little bit of garbage geometry in here that we'll go ahead and get rid of. This just happens to be because I, because of the way I made it. You might not have the same geometry, but whoops, got a little too much there. Again, zoom in. I can't say that often enough. And there's that part of the roof. So. We'll come around now, and I think I want to put a little bit of taper on the top. So I'm going to, again, zoom in. I'm going to use tape measure tool just to do a little bit of layout geometry. I'll pull down to about there, eighth of an inch. And I'm going to come over here. What's that say, five eighths? That's good. And then I'll come over to this side and pull over until it says five eighths. Or I can pull over a ridiculous amount and just type in five dash eight and hit enter. And the reason I put those guidelines there is so that I can draw these line segments in a symmetrical way. And now that they're drawn, I can take and use the push-pull tool to subtract. And I'm just going to pull towards the front. And when I reach that front face, it'll do that. Give me that sort of dual shaded inference geometry and when I let go of the left mouse button it does away with it. I'll do that again. I'll pull across here like so and it does that or if I'm extra lazy I can just come up here and double click on it. Because remember SketchUp remembers how far you push pulled the previous time. There is the roof of our locomotive, if you want, and I'll do this off camera. We just can go ahead and delete some of these guidelines that I created. We're going to go ahead and I think we'll go ahead and make the chimney next. I'm going to use a little bit of cheater geometry to create the smokestack for our locomotive. I'll grab the pencil tool or the line tool, grab that midpoint, and just come out parallel with the red axis so it extends beyond the front of the locomotive. Hit escape, go to my top view, and now I'm going to take and draw a cross section of the chimney or smokestack. So I'll start on that line and notice how the circle's blue. That means that it is parallel to the ground or to the plane that makes up the red and the green axis. So I'll make it about that size. We can scale it later if we want to. I'm going to delete a little bit of cheater geometry here. And now you'll notice when I use the select tool, if I just click once, it just grabs the points inside. But if I double click on it, it grabs the points inside the circle along with the circular edge or the circle itself. And so that's what we want to do is have both of those. And so now I'm going to introduce you to the move tool. And when I click on the move tool, I am prompted over in the instructor to 
pick a start point and then go to an end point. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to mouse over the edge and then come up and grab the center. And then I'm just going to come along parallel with the red axis or my cheater geometry and place it. That looks good. Let's go to an ISO view and that looks like it's parallel and everything is lined up well so let's go ahead and delete that line and then use the push pull tool to extend it down inside the boiler. Now when I'm doing that I'm actually pulling the surfaces inside of each other. And I'll show you what I mean here if I delete this face you can see it inside and that's okay and there's lots of advanced ways that you can deal with that but for now we have a pretty decent looking smokestack but we can make it a little bit better and to do that I'm going to come in here I'm going to select this top surface and introduce you to a new tool called the scale tool and when I select it I get these grips now what do I do with them well I come over and I look inside the instructor and I see that if I hold down the control key I can scale it about the center and that's what I want because if I don't have that and I start pulling it starts going all kinds of goofy directions and that's not what we want so we want to hold down the control key and get that red grip in the center and then just kind of flare it out a little bit so it looks a little bit more like a real smokestack on a locomotive Then I'm going to take the push pull tool because if the top of the smokestack is not higher than the window or the, the cab roof. There's going to be a lot of smoke coming in through the window. So I'm just going to take and pull this up a little bit. Then I'm going to select the scale tool again. Select this surface. Hold down the control key like I did before. And there's the chimney or smokestack for our locomotive. It's time to build the four wheels for our locomotive. We're going to make them about one inch in diameter and they need to be symmetrical. That is, we can't just put them anywhere. So I'm going to do something that's just a little bit different than maybe what you might have expected. You might remember that our base here is one half inch. So with that information in mind, I am going to take my base and use the push pull tool and cut it in half, cut its thickness in half. So I'm going to just type in 0.25 and I'm going to put it back later on, but you'll see why I'm going to be doing this in, in just a second. Again, there are many ways to do it. I'm now going to take the tape measure tool so that my wheels on the left and the right are the same distance and I guess I'll put it about there and then I'll grab this front edge and come back about there. Let's see, we'll go to our ISO tool and come around now and let's go ahead and make our first wheel. So to do that I'll use the circle tool and the reason I put those guidelines there is so that I can find that intersection. There it is. And I'm going to pull out and I'm going to give it a diameter of one inch. So I'll just type in one, hit enter. I'm going to do the same thing down the other side. Come to this intersection. Pull out. Type in one, hit enter. And then I need to push pull those out. And you'll notice there are different segments here, but we'll address that in just a, just a second here. Let's see. So I'm going to click on that, pull this out. You have to sort of spin it around to, to get a reasonable amount, and I think half inch will be fine, so 0.5. And then I'll just double click, double click, double click, double click, double click. And there's our two wheels. We'll come through and do the same thing on the other side. Use circle tool, find the intersection, pull out one enter, push pull tool. Double click, double click, double click. Oops, I must have clicked wrong. There we go. And I'll come down here, use the circle tool again, come into the intersection, pull out one enter, and then push pull tool. 
and there we go. Now we want to clean up each wheel and so to do that we need to get rid of a little bit of this extra geometry that came along because of the way we built it so we don't need that reference line anymore. Grab those, come around this side, grab those guys, get that and just kind of go around and clean it up like this. But once you have all those lines gone you pretty much have your wheels in place. And of course you can make fancier wheels if you want. More than welcome to do that. Notice again I'm just taking and holding down the left mouse button and dragging across. By the way I put in my door but I just noticed there's a little extra line that we can get rid of right there. And you can kind of look around and, and see if you have any extra guidelines but those are the wheels of our locomotive. I mean, it's, um, it's getting pretty close to done. So go ahead and at this point do a save and we'll continue on with finishing it up. At this point with your locomotive, you should feel really, really good. You've managed to create a three-dimensional model that is true shape, true size using your computer. Let's go ahead and just do a couple of other things to spruce it up. These are optional and sort of make it yours. I'm going to first of all take and put a headlight on the front and so to do that I'm going to again just put a little bit of cheater geometry in here. I'm going to find the midpoint of this line. Come on. There we go. And I'm just going to draw a parallel with the blue axis. Maybe about that high and then I'm going to make a circle on the face. Pull it out a little bit, use the push-pull tool to pull it out a little bit and then select the face and use the scale tool much like we did with the smokestack. Hold down the control key remember and just kind of pull it out a little bit. I'm going to pull around here just so I can get what there we go. And I think that looks pretty good. So there's our headlight. And so now we want to put a little bit of text on here. Now you don't have the text tool in the Getting Started toolbar. So you have to go to the Tools pull down menu and choose 3D Text. Now when you do that, you have your choice of all kinds of fonts. And I've got like a million of them on my computer. And you can pick any font you want. I'm sure you're used to doing that. I'm going to align it around the center and you'll see why in a second. Um, I'm going to give it a height of about a quarter inch. Remember our whole locomotive is just a few inches tall so I think the default when you first open it up is 10 inches and you certainly don't want text 10 inches tall. And let's see right now it says it's going to extrude it or make it about an inch thick. That'll be too much, so I'm just going to go ahead for now. Well, actually, I'm going to leave it one inch because I'm going to show you how to um, go ahead and, and edit it and modify it because no matter what I say, yours is going to be just a little bit different. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in some text here. And I'm going to click on Place. And at this point, you see it wants to know where do I want to stick it to. Well I want to put it on the side of the cab on this face. So let's kind of move it around although you can do this later on. Let's see let's just stick it about there. Let's take a look at our different views here. Yeah, You see how it's really sticking out there? There we go. Now at this point I can use the move tool and just grab it anywhere and move it around that face. So I like it to be relatively centered. So I'll put it about there. I'll give it a little bit of a spin here. And this is where you can now take and scale it. So I click on the scale tool and we get the usual grips. I'm just going to grab this middle one here and just pull it in a reasonable amount. There isn't like really anything that's perfect, but we just want it to stick out just a little bit. Okay, and so there's our text. Now, 
to do it for the other side, I'm just going to come up and go Edit, Copy, or I can use Control C on my keyboard. I'm going to spin around to the other side, and I'm now going to take and go Edit, Paste, or Control V. And again, I'll just go ahead and stick it someplace for now. Find a view that works for me. Let's see, so I think we got that one. There we go. And just kind of get it centered up. And there's our text. After 38 years in the classroom, I can almost guarantee that if you haven't had any fun so far, you're going to have some fun now. Because this is the part that everybody enjoys, because now they can take their 3D model, which is just kind of this monolithic gray 3D mask, and go ahead and make it more personal, more like a child's wooden painted locomotive. So let's go ahead and do that. And we go ahead and do that with the paint bucket tool. And when I click on it, watch what happens over in our trays. The materials tray opens up. Now we, I'm going to go ahead and window shade close the instructor tray by just clicking on it once. And then I'm going to just slowly mouse over the bottom of the materials tray and slide it down so that I can see all the different materials that are available to me. These are just the ones that are built into the program. Asphalt, glass, um, metals, water, I mean just, just a bunch of them. And you can take and just about introduce any material or import almost any material into your model if you'd like to. But since this is just a painted toy, I'm just going to go to colors. And when I click on that, I get this large palette that I can choose from. And there's literally an infinite number of colors, but these are the, just the default ones. And I'm going to click on this little icon right here, the details icon, and I'm going to change it to medium thumbnails and that's just so that I can see all of the same colors at the same time. Pick any colors you want. I mean, it's, it's completely up to you. But here's where I'm going to start. And I'm just going to do a little bit of this, give you a couple of pointers, and then I'm going to go ahead and let you finish it the way you want, rather than having you sit there and agonize while you watch me paint. I'm sure you enjoy doing it on your own much more than watching me do it. So I'm just going to pick a blue here, and I'm going to come in and paint the roof of my cab. And remember SketchUp does everything at surfaces or faces. So I need to paint each of those individual faces. Now, whoop, almost forgot the bottom. Now I'm going to go ahead and work on the cab here. I'm just going to pick a nice red because the more vibrant the toy is, the child is going to enjoy it. And I'm just picking some of these different places. Again, you, you might need to zoom in to get them all. And that's enough of me doing that because, but there's one more thing that I want to point out, one more part of the paint bucket tool that you can use. Say you're overworking on the boiler or painting those pieces and you realize, oh, wait a second. I forgot this area right up here, but what color was that? I mean, how, how do I match that color? Well, you've got the eyedropper tool right up here, and if you go ahead and click on the eyedropper, it will sample the paint for you. And when you come over here, if you click on the red once here, it'll change the paint bucket tool, and it'll take you right back so that you can get those spots that you missed. So enjoy the paint bucket tool and I'll come back one more time to wrap it all up and add a few closing thoughts. So here's my completed locomotive. I hope you've enjoyed building yours and I hope it even turned out better than mine, which is always a possibility. Look forward to seeing you again soon on Tech with Mr. Wesley.